big updates, small roadmaps and hopefully intense races in our news right here, right now. Greetings Romis and welcome to Rum Rum, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to our regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video with a couple of segments hosted by our very own Ike Sky. Yay! If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at rumrum.net. Interesting movement in the sim stats this month and maybe just maybe one of the many things we'll discuss in our podcast romcoms coming out this Thursday. Every first Thursday of the month is Romcoms Day, now with new logo, thanks to Cody's excellent work. The 1.9.2 version of Assetto Corsa Competizione has seen some balance of performance fine-tuning on Monza and Laguna Seca, a correction in the graining of the tires and what Kunos calls a tire model fine-tuning, which we've heard was deeper than just a fine-tuning, as the extreme setups used by some people are still possible and still bring benefits in racing, although they by all means should should not. We expect Kunos to go the way of Reza, at least if they're serious about it, and bring tweaks to the tire model with every small and big version of the sim. Added to those changes, Kunos has done some ground collision tweaks on the Nissan GTR 2018 and the Lexus. Moving on, but keeping within the realm of Kunos, Paolo Gibaudo, aka Gibos, announced on Instagram he's joining Kunos Simulazioni, with an image that makes us think he'll be doing a lot of physics. For those not as deep in the sim racing rabbit hole as yours, truly, Gibos developed Richard Burns Rally Online and G Rally and had a lot of sway in Richard Burns Rally. Not exactly a rookie developer in the genre, we expect he'll be joining the team for Assetto Corsa 2, but as we only have the incredibly sparse Insta post to go by, we are just inferring. On the level of 1 to 10, the roadmap for the whole year that Race Room published this week could be measured in about 0.5 Razas. Really, this roadmap is a joke. A joke compared to what gets published by Reza every couple of months or for Beam and G every half a year. This is just the bare minimum to keep the sim afloat. Either KW Studios is winding down or they are occupied doing something else. As they have run out of licenses, WTCR having winded down, DTM having been sold to ADAC, they are going to be publishing packs for the near future, each pack around the theme, adding cars to existing classes or setting up completely new classes. Expect these packs to come beginning of July, beginning of October and shortly before Christmas. In between these packs we'll see either individual cars or just livery updates. The first of these intermediate releases will be the BMW M4 GT3 with different liveries depending on which series the car is present in. The July quarterly pack will bring three Porsches, the 992 model 911 GT3R, the 911 GT3 Cup and the 944 Turbo Cup from the mid 1980s. October will bring the excellent French track Circuit de Pauville and as for now not nearly disclosed touring cars in a pack. No news about KW Studios working on any updates of the graphics, the physics or anything else specifically within the game engine. EA Sports have released their primary intentions with the next iteration of the Formula 1 franchise. F123 will see the return of the Breaking Point Story Mode, Red Flags and an iteration on the tyre model introduced in F1 2022, as well as updated tracks and liveries as we've come to expect from the license holders. The game is due to release June 16th and if you pre-order before the 31st of May in the Champions Edition, you'll get an in-game helmet designed by Max Verstappen Happen, various cosmetic items, a Las Vegas pack with no comment on what that contains, and 18,000 Bitcoin. 
presumably the in-game currency of the new game. Hopefully the only in-game currency. If you pre-order the standard pack, you'll get an F1 World Starter Pack, again, ambiguous as to the contents of this pack, and 5,000 Bitcoin. As always, our recommendation will be not to take them up on these pre-order bonuses, as refunding on various platforms if the game is broken on release can be difficult. Always wait on independent reviews before handing over your hard-earned money to a corporate monolith like EA. With about 1,000 more average daily users than last month, our hobby is definitely not on the downward spiral, in spite of the doom and gloom others spout around. There's others who have it worse. Of course, NASCAR 21, but also Dakar Desert Rally, which can be considered a flop on PCs by now, dropping below even Cardcraft usage numbers. And WRC Generations numbers dropping steadfast are also not good news. Who may or may not be in a downward spiral may be our factor too, but we've seen this before. Two months of dropping numbers, then the numbers show a spike, then back to dropping numbers, lather, rinse, repeat. Good numbers on the other hand coming from Assetto Corsa, Dirt Rally 2 and Assetto Corsa Competizione, the latter having its best numbers ever. Seems people were waiting to be able to drive in Valencia all this time. Kidding of course, but it's still interesting to see. At least we think it's the effect of the latest DLC, but we're open to other explanations. That's what the comment section of our videos is for. Well, that and our Discord. Automobilista 2 and Race Room can be considered stagnant and while Automobilista 2 keeps almost steady at a high number of average users, Race Room's numbers may be only a short respite from the clear downward trend of the last months. Considering the roadmap they just published and we talk about elsewhere in this video, we'd be surprised if this trend reverses anytime soon. That's right, renowned R Factor 2 mod makers Advanced Simulation have taken their own Renault Clio RS Cup V2023 R Factor 2 mod and are going to publish it for Assetto Corsa soon. Both versions of the car mod were made with feedback of real Clio Cup drivers and technical information from Alpine, so we expect them to have great feel and realism. We'll tell you soon soon as we get our hands on them, of course. As an exclusive, we can tell you ASRC is also working on starting a racing series on Assetto Corsa, but using an open wheel mod instead of the Clio. Oh, bummer. Speaking of Clio racing, we're near the start of the ASRC Russell Cup 2023, as the first race will be next week's Monday 15th of May on Croft. We'll be there broadcasting what promises to be a great race, or rather said, races, as each racing day will be comprised of three races, the first two being five lap sprint races, the first sprint race using a reverse grid based on qualifying, the second sprint race having a reverse grid dependent of the results of the first race of the day, and the main race being 30 minutes in length using the qualifying order as grid order. The sprint races will each bring less points than the main race, but still enough to not be ignored. And ASRC tells us their grid maximum of 30 drivers is more than full, so these races are going to be intense. And one day before that, you can already delight in the Stock Car 2023 Championship, which will start with the Fontana 200 and move one week later to Las Vegas 200. All on ovals, no need to turn right. Let's see if the ASRC drivers have learned how to drive ovals and how to best use drafting. If you'd like to support our channel, which we sure wish you would and can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash romrom. Among other perks, becoming a patron will fix your name for posterity like this, but you also get to know what we plan and what we're doing and will be able to take part in our decisions, so a big thank you to our patrons. If you're feeling friendly, please consider subscribing. 
Rietzer Studios, as per their usual prolific work of passion, has laid out their plans for Automobilista 2 over the next three months. Firstly, the cars. Coming in May, the Formula Junior, a 100 horsepower, 400 kilo, 1960s mini F1 car, will be the staple of low horsepower lobbies across the board, not least of which at the new tracks coming, which will highlight the low horsepower and beg the driver to make speed in the corners, which the skinny tires will not be able to deliver, a delicate balance for all drivers to maintain. Part of a part three of Racing USA pack coming later this year is the Formula USA 2023, an update to the cease and desist received from IndyCar regarding the similarity to the real-life IR18 from 2022. Rietz used this opportunity to open talks regarding the use of IndyCar licensed tracks like Indianapolis and looked at the option of making their own interpretation of the IndyCar formula rather than aping the real car. From the images we have, they've done an excellent job and arguably made a prettier IndyCar than IndyCar. The Brazilian Stock Car Series 2023 will be the eighth season represented in the AMS series, and while not bringing too much to the table at the moment other than new liveries and new tyres, the impact of these won't be felt until an update that we'll get into later. The Sigma P1 G5 is an update to the existing Sigma P1, which hopefully will bring it up to pace with the Metal Moro AJR that is dominating the P1 prototype class in Brazil. More information is sure to come, but unlike some of the cars in Automobilista 2, this is a real car. It looks and sounds excellent in real life, and knowing Rietz's passion for this project, this one will be translated to sim racing exceptionally. Now to the tracks. Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya is coming to AMS2 hopefully late in May. As a standalone DLC or as part of the various season passes and packs already available in game. So now your front left tyre can scream for all it's worth along with all the other sims in any one of the new and old cars coming soon. A big change in the handling of the tyres is also coming with the 1.5 version of the sim. It was triggered by the discovery of an issue with how the tyre model of the Madness engine was interacting with the old, like really old, Izzy P motor model, from which it was getting fed some tyre related values. Basically this was resulting in a confused tyre carcass with oscillating spring rates which were different from what was actually being input into the STM, the grip calculator used in the Madness engine. As explained in previous revisions, since the dynamics of the whole vehicle literally ride on how the carcass flexes under load due to its direct repercussions on aerodynamics and suspension, fixing this issue once again demands an extensive overhaul not only to the tyres, but all car physics. Much like ACC, the tyres are the things that has been lacking from the AMS simulation. Also part of this update will be a change to the handling of the car floors. From what the patch notes say, it seems there's been an issue where the simulation wasn't interacting the floor with the track correctly, meaning that when the car did bottom out, it was in effect absorbing the initial bump and then forcing the model out of the track in an undampened manner. Much like the infinite travel bump stops of ACC, the effect of this would be the cars pinging out of the track as the physics engine attempted to make sense of the car not being in the right place, effectively an undampened second spring. Fixing this will stop low riding cars like the Formula cars from bouncing off curbs in an unrealistic manner, as well as making grounding out the cars feel more realistic compared to prior. These changes already rolled out on a limited number of cars introduced in the 1.4 versions of AMS2. The 1.5 will bring these changes to all cars, a massive amount of work to fix a varied array of formula in AMS2, much to look forward to. And finally, under the physical additions to AMS2 coming soon, the historic Nürburgring, including the Nord and Suchleifer, already released into beta, will of course be officially released soon. So grab your favourite car and take to possibly the most dangerous iteration of the world's most dangerous racetrack, along with all of the younger forests and lack of crash barriers that that one brings.